viewers and warm welcome to ET Interact. Continuing with our series, Masters of Time, we will talk about <coughs> making sense of analytics today through Microsoft Excel. Everyone deals with data. We spend a lot of time in cleaning it and creating reports and MIS. In this session, Dr. Nitin Paranjpe will help us understand the ideal data format, smart ways to clean up, and new methods of analyzing data. We will learn how to go beyond standard reporting and gain actionable information from data that you already have. Dr. Nitin will also cover new methods of interactively visualizing data, including converting locational data into maps. And finally, we will learn efficient methods of sharing the insights with others. We present to you our webinar, Data Rich but Information Poor. During the course of this webinar, you can write your questions to the webinar console and they will be taken up at the end of this webinar. Over to you, Dr. Nitin. Thanks, Mansi. Uh, welcome everyone for this webinar. During the course of this session, we are going to see a lot of stuff. So I'm going to speak very fast, but to make sure you don't miss out on anything, this is getting recorded and you will see the video very soon. Uh, a few things to remember. I'm sure all of you see the screen there is a drop down on top of the screen which shows you zoom level. Drop it down and choose full screen. That way you will see maximum resolution and you will understand most of the demos better because you can see it in larger screen size and font size. Most of my demo is not a presentation. I'm going to actually show you live stuff. Now the video is getting recorded and uh, the video will be available to you on this link at the end of the session after a few minutes or half an hour after the session. Now you may be wondering, I'm recording the video right now and how can I publish the link for the download of the video? Don't worry, I'll explain that. I've written a blog on how to do this. So let's go ahead. I'm going to switch off the webcam because that takes up a lot of bandwidth. So now let's come back to the core basics. What, what is the real purpose of what we call as analysis? When we get some data, it's an input. We do some processing on top of it and then we produce some output. Everyone knows that. Exactly how to do it? That depends on data and the processing requirements. But one thing is generally almost sure. Whatever data you have got is typically historical data. That means it has already happened. You cannot change anything there. So why are we spending so much time? Because it's not that we can change anything in the past, but if you learn from the past, we can utilize that knowledge to act in a better way in order to improve the future. That is the whole purpose of analytics. So learning from the past to improve the future is analytics. Agreed. Now, that brings us to a very important concept which many of us have forgotten in recent times. When we say I want to learn from the past, what I really mean is I want to learn every possible useful thing from the past, not just the standard reports which someone is asking from me. We will come back to it a little later, just ruminate on that. Most of us spend a lot of time in creating reports and MIS and we think that is analytics. That's not. That's just a subset of analytics. We will see as we explore more and more ideas what really it means and how the scope can be expanded obviously to your advantage. So the process is fairly simple, but it can get messy and all of you have experienced that. So we get data from somewhere. It could be a database. It could be a simple text file or CSV file you have uploaded. Invariably, we are in a hurry to convert that to a report or something which we can interpret. But typically what happens is that information is not necessarily in the format you would like it to be. And then we end up spending a lot of time and energy in cleaning it up. But generally, this is the process. So raw data is large. We want to summarize it because just by scrolling it, you're not going to understand anything. We make it smaller, summarize it, and then we try to interpret it. Of course, based on the interpretation, we will share our thoughts with others and people, including yourself, will act on that information to improve the future. Now let's classify data into two very simple types. This is not an IT definition, this is a user definition. So actually what I really want to do is um, 
uh, make sure that I clarify the focus of today's session. This is more end user oriented session. Some of you may be from IT, but still the focus of today is on end user and what as a user you can do. So even if you are from IT, there are times when you get raw data and you still work on it. So I'm sure it will be useful to all of you. Now, I'm at this stage going to just do a quick poll to understand what kind of products we are using. So just give me a picture of what we can. All right. Very nice. I'm going to give a few seconds for people to respond. By the way, it's a, I think a record turnout. We have around 600 plus people in the audience, which is great. Thank you for your time. All right, it looks nice. It's around 45% 2010 and 40% 2013. I'm sure Microsoft will be very happy. All right, it's stabilizing. Give me a few more seconds. Now the issue is most of the things which I'm going to show you today are based on the new version, but that doesn't mean I'm not, I'm going to just leave out the old version. Around 30% of what I show will work on any version of Office or Excel and new things will obviously work on 2013. Now in most cases, the newer features work in the professional edition of Excel. Remember that. All right, so I'm going to go back from the poll and show my screen back. So now let's look at the data. If the data forces you to clean it up, which is a waste of time, inefficiency, before you can analyze it, we call it bad data. If data can be got in such a way that people can actually work on it without any analysis or without any cleanup, just let me go back one slide, there was a problem. So if you get data, you waste time in cleaning it up, we call it bad data. But if you get data which is well behaved and doesn't require you to clean up, we call it good data. Now conceptually this looks nice, but it's important to tell you what exactly good data means. There has to be some method by which you look at it and realize is it good or bad? How do we do that? So it's a very simple definition. Data, if it's like a table, it's called good data, tabular data. So simple example. Everything should have a heading followed by data. The data should be consistent in each column. Now this sounds simple, but very often this itself can get spoiled. For example, in this case where we have exactly same headings, but the data type got mixed up. Or in this case, even worse, we have put two kinds of information in one column. This is another common problem, which if you don't notice and correct at an early stage, you will waste a lot of time analyzing that data. Another example I recently found, this is from a government site, data.gov.in, which gives you government related data. It's a simple tabular data. Most of it is common, most of it is good, but there is a hash sign there and that hash indicates it is provisional. Now, if you want to indicate something is provisional, do not put that as a part of the base cell itself. If you want to put it as provisional, put an extra column called status and then put provisional yes or no. That is what I mean by making data good. So here are very simple rules for checking whether the data you have received is good or bad. Some of you may be technical people. In technical terms, it is called normalization, but I don't want to confuse users with unwanted jargon. So when you get the data, concept is simple. Look at it, apply all these principles. If any of them is missing or wrong, that means the data is bad. And then what do you do next? Now, the most important thing you don't do is continue working on analyzing the data in spite of knowing that it is in bad format. And that is what we have been doing for years, which exponentially increases the time required for cleanup and analysis. Now, what do you do in that case? You get the data, you check it. If it is good, continue. If it is bad, don't even attempt to convert it to good or clean it up. Send it back to the source because typically, Data has come from somewhere, either someone did data entry, someone you purchased it from somewhere, it came from some system report, someone gave you a CSV file, that entity or person is called the source. Just send it back to them and say, I want it in this format where it is tabular. 
and believe me very often especially from an it system or business system point of view all the data in the world is stored in tabular format in most cases so for them to give it to you in tabular form is easier than giving it to you in a spoiled format so just attempt it if it works well and good if it doesn't then of course you need to know how to convert data to good format so i'm going to show you some examples i'm going to quit this ppt and we are going to see one of the commonest types of bad data people get all the time so let me open that particular file <clears throat> so what i have here is a bad data format i hope you can see it i'm going to give it few seconds now it looks okay everything is in columns every column has a heading and so on and so forth but there is a problem these gaps are the problem now remember gaps in column e the amount column are not the problem only in year and month there is a problem because if we sort it if we convert it to a pivot table if we filter it all the gaps will fall in together which is not correct because some gaps mean jan some gaps mean march so invariably we end up taking this extra work of filling up gaps on our head and waste our precious life that is called inefficiency in fact if you are wasting half an hour one hour whatever it takes to fill the gaps it's you who is helping excel instead of excel helping you and if you understand my concept and if you had attended my session earlier or uh, uh, seen my blog if you are helping the software that means your method is inefficient you must assume that microsoft must have detected this problem and solved this now this kind of data typically comes from pivot table typically very often we want to do something in a pivot table but it doesn't allow you to do it so we feel we should copy paste it as values and while we are doing that we know that the pivot table is going to misbehave and it is going to be my extra work to fill in the gap so this is a pivot table now now before i copy i never even attempted to think that pivot table will be capable of filling the gaps so this is how you find it assume that there is a solution obviously that solution has to be in a pivot table menu so this is not an analysis related issue this is a look and feel issue so you go to design eliminate the unwanted buttons like i am not adding subtotals i am not adding grand totals maybe report layout has the issue read all the options and then surprisingly you will find this button sitting there for almost 5 6 years which nobody noticed but if you do notice it and click on it it fills the gaps in one click people spend hours doing this when there is a button which could have done it in seconds so start exploring and start benefiting from it that's one kind of bad data another kind of bad data which we get very often is financial kind of data i have taken a subset but you understand the concept typically we get things like this this is a report this is not raw data if you apply our principles of good data all the all the rules fail here so to save time i'm going to show you how this data should have been in the good format first of all it doesn't have a title but even if we give it a title it is not going to be sufficient because there is something bold something indented what does that mean there are category sub category sub sub category we have three meanings and we cannot have three meanings in one column so we need three columns similarly this thing called 2013 and 14 is in the place where the heading should be but in reality the heading should have been year 2013 and 14 is data not heading so when data comes in the place of heading it's a bad idea so just to save time i'm going to show you the same data in a good format so how does that look simple tabular data now once you have this you can make a pivot table to generate whatever report you want in fact if this was one company or group or sbu's data and you have multiple such group companies we can add another column called company append multiple companies data here and then create a pivot table which will either give you a group wide consolidation or allow you to filter by company so if the raw data is good further life becomes extremely simple and because it is so easy to analyze it you will find many more useful pieces of information so let's go ahead there is one kind of bad data which is difficult to manage for example this one i have expense code expense category expense type these columns are okay but followed by that there are 12 columns of jan feb march april may june now i am just showing this as a sample i want you to look at the pattern there are some columns which are genuinely good in terms of heading and data but some columns have a problem 
all these columns jan to december have a same problem jan feb march is data rather than heading so now ideally we should have got this data in this format now problem is if i have to manually do it i will have to select all this from jan to december copy this and then come here and paste special as transpose multiple times and then copy paste the equivalent row n number of times obviously that is inefficient so now microsoft created a beautiful new tool which i desperately want all of you to explore and that particular tool is called power query i don't know if you have seen power query before but if you have not you must go and download this this is not a part of base excel this works on 2010 and 2013 but it needs to be downloaded and installed if you are from it please install it on on your desktops if you are from a user side please ask it to install it for you so let me show you how a new tool called power query can help you here once you install it it's a free download you get a menu here on top now in this menu power query is very flexible and extremely capable of getting data from all kinds of sources even those you have not imagined so just a quick view of what it can get data from it can get it from a browser i'll show you a demo of that it can get it from all kinds of files or all kinds of databases you can think of or even from microsoft azure or hadoop blob storage stuff like that and some not so standard sources like a sharepoint list for example it will also be able to do social analytics with facebook if you use sap with business objects as the bi tool no problem it can connect to bi universe or salesforce objects and reports as well but maybe you have some weird database which is not latest the least common denominator of connectivity is odbc every database in the world has an odbc driver so all kinds of data you can connect to using power query now you will ask me we could connect to data sources using earlier version of excel also what is the big deal the big deal is here it doesn't just connect it gives you additional capabilities of cleaning up the data removing unwanted things shaping the data in the way you want in a much much faster way than we have ever imagined before so now with that in mind let's go to power query what we really want is the first three columns should remain as they are but the column d onwards 12 columns jan to december as a bulk operation should be rotated into just two columns month and amount now that is what power query is good at so i'm going to ask power query to pick up data from here because it's an excel sheet it will convert it to a table to start with and then it will show you the same data here so what am i looking at right now nothing has changed the same data so i go here and select what is happening here jan to december and i just right click here and say unpivot columns that's all and that then what happens in one click it does the job is that simple now of course this data was small but even if this data was large the performance is phenomenal so this is one of the ways in which power query can help you let me show you another way in which power query can help by the way after doing this we can say close and load in which case the corrected or good kind of data will be imported into another sheet and your job is done now let's look at another situation let's say i am searching for some data on browser and i go to some browser and search for data like this i'm going to search for let's say shopping malls now obviously i'll get lot of results and i won't know which one is right which one is wrong i'll have to click on each menu or click on each uh, search result and then figure out which one is the best for me now that is lot of trial and error <clears throat> so let's try to do that inside uh, inside excel but before that i'm going to go and show you one of the sites hopefully it has some tabular data so if i scroll down there is some data here and if i try to copy paste that data it will appear in excel not necessarily in the way i like it it will have some urls it will have some javascript it will have pictures and i'll waste my time cleaning it up so now power query gives you a nice new way of doing the same thing so what do i do i just go to excel go to power query and power query has something called data catalog search microsoft has some very commonly used data sources pre 
created or pre-managed so to say curated is the correct word and there I'm going to search for list of same query so there is a browser here it is doing that search it is giving me some search results but notice without I having to do trial and error I'm just taking my mouse cursor on each of them and it has already figured out the HTML, it has found out the useful table tags, parse them, removed unwanted stuff and it is showing you a quick preview. So let's say I like this one, but I know that there are some things which I don't really want. I don't want that square feet and meter, I just want the number in square feet. I may not want all the columns and so on. So before importing the data as it is, I want to edit it and refine it to the way I want. Now this is a new concept in terms of the mindset. What are we saying here? We are saying till now we used to import data as it arrives. In whatever format it arrives, we first import it and then think about cleaning. Now the method of thinking itself has changed. You first import a small preview of it and then do all the changes to it and then ask Power Query to import it. Now in this case, the data has only nine rows, so it doesn't matter. But if this page had 20,000 rows, Power Query would show you only 100 or the first few as a sample accept all the inputs from you as to what changes you want to do which columns you want what data types you want all the transformations you want and then finally when you say import it is going to apply those steps to the real data and import it in the correct format that saves you a lot of trouble so now in this case let's say I don't want a particular column I right click on it and say remove now in this case I have a problem because I only want the number and I don't want the square meters at all. So now notice how beautifully this is done. There is an option called split column and by a delimiter is something like a import dialog we used to get but this has some nice options. For example in this case I want it to be split by space but not by all spaces. If I had done it by all spaces the number, the SP, the feet would have gone into three columns. Here I am saying just take one space from the left side and then it will split it into two columns nicely, one which I want and because now it is split into a number it has automatically right aligned it that means it's a numeric column and the second one I don't want so I will just remove it. Now I will do that otherwise I can also select the columns I need and say remove other columns. Also notice that like we used to record a macro, this is getting recorded and finally when I say close and load, it's going to give me clean data and had this page been having 20,000 or 1 lakh or whatever rows, it would have now applied the transformations and got you clean data. Isn't that nice? Impressed? But don't get impressed too soon, don't start clapping now because there is more. Remember, this is a web page. In this case, malls don't get added every day, but this could have been a live page where data gets added and updated quite commonly. So if I go to the same page three days later, I'm already outdated. So what do I do? I don't have to repeat anything now. I just go to this table query option on top and then I say refresh. And now what is it going to do? It remembers the URL, it remembers your transformation and it's just going to refresh the whole data without you having to do anything. But even more importantly, if you realize that this data and the effort you have put to clean it up is so nice, many other people from your team, department or organization can benefit from it, then you can share it or send to the BI catalog, in which case other people can also use the data source without having to lift their finger. They just use it, that's it. That, that is how the effort you have put can be reused across the organization. I don't have too much time to show you everything about Power Query, but you can go to my blog and there are lots of articles there and I'll also give you some more references about Power Query a little later. All right, so let's go further. Now, let's look at summarizing data in pivot table, which I'm sure all of you do, but still few things I want to explain. Now, one of the things I want to explain is, normally when we look at the data, there is something called show values as. Some of us do use it to get percentages, but there are many options there. I strongly suggest you take few minutes of your precious time, take some sample data which is familiar to you, and look at all the options and understand what each one does. I don't have time to show you all of them, but I'm going to show you one which is so critical that people tend to take 
wrong decisions just because of lack of knowledge about one important thing. I just said percentage of column total. What did that do? Grand total became 100 and now we are seeing contribution by month. Now at this stage, if you see what is the contribution of Jan, it is 12. What is it of Feb? It is 6. That is correct. Contribution to the grand total. That is how you interpret this data. June contribution is 10, November is 4, whatever. But you never should use this data to compare Jan with Feb or any month with any other month. And that is a mistake we do. For example, if I ask you how much bigger is the Jan value compared to Feb, you will be tempted to say somewhere around 6% because that's mental calculation we do visually there. That is going to be really wrong. So just to show you why it is wrong, I'm going to put the amount again. And now you notice this is 75 and this is 150,000 so it's by no means anywhere near 6% it is much much bigger so when you want to do a point comparison between let's say one value Feb with in our case we want to do it with Jan but might as well do Feb, com Feb comparison with all other months that is done by going to show values as percent difference from obviously percent difference from is an incomplete sentence so from what which we have already selected Feb and now it says it is 98% bigger. So try using this option when you are comparing anything with anything else other than the grand total. Like this, each of these show values as options is extremely useful and powerful. I don't have time to show all of them, but please, please, please explore all of them. And then you will understand what you are missing. Now. Another thing you need to learn is what is called as calculated fields and calculated items. I absolutely don't have time to show this because I want to focus more on the newer features, but let me explain one concept. When we have a column, this column technically is called a field. This is a column, this is a column, and the items means data inside the column. So card type, there are three types of card, gold, silver, and platinum. So gold, silver, platinum are items, and card type is the field. Now, in a pivot table, what happens? If you have two columns which you need to calculate or compare against, we can go to analyze, we can go here and say calculated field. So if I had one field called amount and another called discount and I wanted net, I should not go outside the pivot table and do the calculation. I can do it inside the pivot table. Similarly, I am just showing you one example here. I am putting month here. Month is the field and Jan, Feb, March are the items. So as long as you click on an item, you will see something called calculated item also. So for example, if I want Q4, what will I do? Inside the pivot table, I will say this is Jan plus this is Feb plus March rather than doing it outside. And now that Q1 will have got created at the end, which I can move to the correct position. In fact, I may remove Jan, Feb, March. It doesn't matter because the calculation is happening inside the pivot table rather than as a manual control. So this is how things work in calculated fields and calculated items. There's one more thing which we normally hate. And as a general rule, inside Office, if you hate a feature, if you find something irritating, that simply means it's extremely useful because Microsoft knows people get irritated. Still, they have taken the risk of troubling 1 billion people and kept that feature. What does that mean? That feature is extremely useful. So here is the example. I Typically, many times we make pivot tables, but the pivot is not the final output. There is an another output, which is in some weird format, which pivot is never going to support. We need a custom columns. We need extra rows, columns, formatting, merge cells, all that. So we keep the pivot table as an interim step and then refer to specific cells in the pivot table by just say equal to this J5, something like that. <clears throat> so now if you do something like that, if I say J5, which is uh, a gold card and restaurant, I will get that number. But if you try to take your cursor there, typically what happens is I get this weird looking get pivot data statement, which many people get irritated about and the problem is when we get irritated with something we never attempt to find out why it has appeared you had a chance to explore it by pressing enter and see what happens but it's so much easier to press escape and go home so don't escape from things explore so how do you explore in this case just press enter now you will think what is the big deal this is the same number but just to visually highlight it i'm just going to put some green color there and now let's see how these numbers behave 
Now I'm going to put transaction type from column area to row area. And now see what happened. The reference which was directly given is confused and it has no clue what's happening. Whereas this one always gives you the correct picture. So please go to my blog, search for get pivot data. There are two or three articles on it and the macro also which I've created. That's the best thing which happens to humanity, but humanity doesn't know about it. Please learn it and start using it. Don't use hard coded references to cells in data area. Oh, so much now. Having seen so many different options, the question which comes to our mind is you have so many show values as which one to use when and the typical answer would be it depends on the data and obviously typical answers are wrong. Please understand that each of those options and each of the analytical options we are going to see after this as well have very different outcomes they give you additional information. The information is not equivalent, it is additional. And our purpose is to learn all the information. That's why you should try all methods with all kind of data and then gain maximum out of it. This is the concept of analytics. Now coming to visualization, there are some things if time permits, I will show you, but just a quick one minute digression to show you what visualization really means. Pivot table and various other methods of analytics will take large amount of data and crunch it and make it smaller so that you can make sense out of it. <laughs> Having done that, now we have got crunch data. Now how do I interpret it? I will have to read the numbers or I will have to create a chart which itself may be confusing. So there are options for simplifying the interpretation of the data. For example, I select the data and then I go to conditional formatting in home tab and put a bar chart within the cell. Now I can compare any value with any value and get some better picture saying 18 Jan product 2 was bad and similarly Feb product 13 was bad. Whether it has business context or not, that is up to your domain knowledge, but at least it gives you a visual picture rather than wasting time reading all the numbers. Now with the same data, I can look at it in a completely different way by classifying it into small, medium and large. This takes the range and divides it into 33%, 67 and 100. That's by default. You can of course change the numbers. But this data has remained the same, but it has given you additional bucket kind of information, which is nice. All right, another kind of information which we get is color scale, which basically makes sense when you have larger amount of data, but it takes shades of color. Minimum gets one value, maximum gets one color, and intermediate cells get a combination of those color. So all these methods are available. Now again, step one, learn everything that is there in conditional formatting and step two when you get data apply all kinds of conditional formatting so that you can actually know all the useful stuff in fact to make it easier in 2013 just to select data there small icon comes which is called quick analysis what is quick about it when you click on it what i just did i added formatting undid it added another one that's no longer required you just take your mouse cursor there and keep moving it and different kinds of visualizations are automatically applied. Previous one is automatically removed. And this also gives you some beautiful charts. Now these are the charts based on the data you have selected. Excel thought which charts are most suitable to depict this data and it has recommended these charts for you. Similarly, if the data was tabular, we could have done pivot tables also. Another nice feature it has is spark lines because if the data is multi-scale, that means there are very large numbers, medium numbers, not so large numbers, very small numbers, then a normal chart doesn't work. But if I use the same data with spark line, notice what happens. A spark line basically means drawing a chart with each row. And that gives us interpretation in terms of fluctuation across time without the smaller row interfering with the larger scale. So all these methods are available in quick analysis. Have a look at them for every piece of data. All right, let's go further. So now let's look at some new methods of analyzing data. What is the new method? The pivot table always has had a problem, many problems actually. It forces you to use one block of data as the input. And many times transactional data has product IDs, customer IDs, location ID, and we don't want to show IDs, we want to show description. Now the ID to description map is in a separate table, either in Excel or somewhere else, so which forces us to do VLOOKUP. 
we look up increases the file size if the data is large obviously file size is large and then everything becomes so slow that we spend 15 20 minutes every day just looking at the file opening closing or refreshing when you drag drop from a pivot table and all this is limited to 1 million rows unfortunately so what is the row way out that solution is called power pivot this is available on 2010 as well as an add-in and 2013 onwards it is built in it adds a new menu or a tab actually inside the ribbon and it allows you to do a lot of stuff what does it do first of all it says do not import data into excel power pivot is like having a database i'm sure many of us have done that before what have we done before because the data was too excruciatingly slow to manage in Excel, we put it in Access, SQL Server, Oracle, somewhere and then connected pivot table to it. That is working, but this is an additional dependency. So now Microsoft said, why not put a data base itself inside Excel? And that is called Power Pivot. So it has no row limit, depending on, of course, if you are handling 100 million rows, obviously you better give it a good machine. but by and large, the same data which you are struggling with in Excel, if you import it into data model or power pivot database, then it will work beautifully on the same hardware. It also eliminates the need for VLOOKUP because you can now create relationships between two tables. Now I don't have time to show you all the aspects of power pivot, but let me show you one example which will cover most of the things which I just mentioned. So let's open a file. This particular file is a large file and it has 43 MB of data. Now this data <coughs> is large. Let me figure out. The file is 43 MB. There are some pivot tables, there are some filters, there are some charts, all that. But the data itself is not inside an Excel sheet. It is inside Power Pivot. So we go to Power Pivot and click on this button called Manage. I'm just going to pause for a second because some people are complaining that there is refresh problem. Just give me a few seconds. All right, problem solved. So now if I go to this thing called data model, let us see what it has inside it. So I'm going to go to power pivot and go to data model. Data model is the built-in database. So this data model is capable of handling very large amount of data, handle it very nicely, keep it small in size. In fact, from a technical point of view, if some of you are technical people out there, it actually creates what is called as an in-memory cube. So internally it is creating sort of a cube, but without troubling the end user with all the complexity involved in creating a cube. This all happens on the fly, so you don't have to worry. So what does this do? Actually, many times our data comes from multiple sources. I may get the transactional data either from a database connection or a CSV file or I may and the master data I may already have which contains just a master list of products and locations and so on. So this particular thing called data model is capable of taking large amount of data and combining multiple pieces of data together. How is that done? Let's see. So as I said, let's try and go and look at the data model. So data model opens in a separate window. Now you can see at the bottom there are multiple tabs and each tab is sort of a table. Technically speaking, the table could have come from different places. So one could have come from a business objects, one could have come from SQL server as a data warehouse, another could have come from a CSV file, another could have come from a Excel sheet. So now what do we do? I have this file or this table or this data called sales, which is the biggest. Look at the scale first. Look at the bottom. How many rows are we talking about? Around 3.9 million or around 4 lakh rows. Now the file size is only 43 MB, so compression is good. But now because there are multiple tables, look at this particular column. This is called channel ID and channel ID I don't want to show. There is a master which says channel ID 1 means what, channel ID 2 means what. So what do I do? I go to the transactional table, right click here and say create relationship and then it says sales table, 
has a column called channel id and that is equivalent to the master table of channels and that equivalent column is channel key and once that is done we can actually create a pivot table we can actually see all this as a diagram view and even manage relationships in the diagram view to make it even simpler now let's see how the performance is just to show you the performance i have created an empty pivot table as we know we have the data shown in this particular pivot tab uh, table which is called sales so i'm going to show this data and uh, in this database we will try to create a new table and see or what is the performance so this is an existing pivot table now if i go and try to do something this sales table here is the biggest one with 4 million rows right now it is showing total sales now i'm going to put total cost here which requires it to process 4 million rows n number of times for each channel for each year and so on and so forth so let's see what is the performance so i'm just doing a simple drag drop notice it has already finished it 4 to 5 seconds of course it depends on the machine configuration my machine is a little better one but even if yours is a worse one instead of 3 seconds it will take 60 seconds which is not too much of a problem so pivot table solves all the problems which typical normal traditional pivot table had power pivot has solved all of them and the best part is when you save all this you are not managing two files you are just managing an xls x file only now as though all this was not enough there is a new way of analyzing data so let's look at that that is called power view so let's look at how power view can be managed so again let me open a file which will show us a sample data first and then we will take it from there so this is a file which has transactional data again this is a credit card transaction file what does that mean the file shows all right so this file contains every row showing a transaction the transaction happened in which type of city which city what was the amount which card type was used and date and so on and so forth simple stuff now typically i would create a pivot table i have created a pivot table which shows the gold platinum silver breakup now if i want to see what happened every month i would put month in the filter and then i would check what happened in jan what happened in feb and so on now the problem here is i just filtered it on jan but now i have forgotten how the entire year looked because the whole circle which was occupied for the entire year is the same size as that for jan actually jan should be smaller but that doesn't happen here that's problem number one. Second problem is even if i had that even if i wanted to see jan versus feb or jan versus something else I have to remember the previous picture which is impossible to do 12 times so if i really want to see seasonal variation one option is i try to remember 12 images in my mind which is difficult or create 12 pivot tables by copy pasting manually and then have a look by creating 12 pivot charts and wasting time arranging them so for these reasons we have a new thing called power view how do you get it you go to insert and click on power view this is specific to office 2013 professional version or the office 365 version i've already added it basically it's designed for dashboard so it adds an empty page and it shows you the same data here so right now i've just dragged and dropped the same thing here city uh, the card type and amount now unlike pivot table this itself can be converted to a chart so i'm going to go here go to design and say i don't like it as a table i convert to pie chart so it is done now let's look at month because we want to see monthly analysis so i drag and drop month and amount and i convert this to a bar chart so let's do a bar chart and it's a stacked bar i can rearrange this as i want it and now forget about the fact that it is not organized in the correct order that is a specific thing i will read my blog about month ordering you will know exactly how to do it but let's not focus on that now now let's focus on what we did earlier in the pivot table if i click on jan notice what happens here the size of contribution of jan obviously has to be smaller than the overall yearly picture so the yearly picture is still preserved but it is a little dimmer visually so that you know and the contribution of jan is in darker color so we can actually see the overall picture as well as within the jan month what is happening 
Now if I go to another month, let's say Feb, notice things changed. I don't know if you can appreciate the animation on your screen, but it is not changing suddenly. Coming back to pivot table, if I change from one month to another, I am going from Jan, notice what happens there, and then I go to Feb, it changes, of course it shows correctly, but it is instant change. So if there are multiple pieces of the pie, it is very difficult to remember it increased in silver or it decreased in platinum. Now it is actually enhancing that movement from the previous state to the current state highlighting and simplifying the interpretation visually. So animation in this case is not just for jazz or style, it is actually improving interpretation. Now with lesser amount of effort, we are going to be able to manage better interpretation. That's one part. Similarly, if I click on a card, let's say platinum, now it is going to do a reverse filter and show me what happened on every month. So this works both ways, which is beautiful. Now one more thing, if I really want to see seasonal variation, this is not very useful because each month shows me only that particular month's picture. So let's see how that problem is solved. So I'm going to keep only this pie chart right now and make it big so that we can see what's happening here. And I do want to use the month somewhere. But if I use the month traditionally, it's going to show me one at a time. But I want 12 months, that's why 12 pie charts. That's like multiplying the pie chart by 12. That's why I drag month and put it into vert vertical multiple and suddenly I get 12 pie charts and now I can actually visually understand how my business changed or how transactions happened and look at the seasonal variation. This is good but there is one more nice refinement on top of it. What can you do here? Suppose I am focusing on the silver card, I click on that pie and the other pie charts or the other pieces of the pie become subdued in color so that they don't interfere with your interpretation. So whatever is your area of interest, click on it, that becomes darker, other becomes simpler. Now the best part about this is this can be in shared with other people by just publishing it on a browser. So I'm just going to save this file. Now this file is not getting saved locally. Normally we save reports locally and then share it with people, but that's not a good idea. Ideally we should store it on SharePoint or OneDrive. I hope you know what is OneDrive. OneDrive is one terabyte of space which you get when you subscribe to Office 365. It can store all kinds of files of course, but in this case we are looking at this file which is just saved. This is a browser version of it. Now if someone looks at this on browser, let us see what happens. It's going to open it not in Excel by default, it is going to open it as a browser page. And on the browser page it is going to show us what we saw in Excel exactly the same thing and the interactivity is still maintained. Now this requires something called Silverlight which all browsers don't support so there is an HTML5 version also which works exactly the same way. So if you have put this file on OneDrive and shared with, with people, those people need not have Microsoft browser. They can view it on an Android tablet or an iPad or any browser on even mobile phones. So that is the beauty of it. You no longer struggle to find how to share large reports with people. There is one problem though. This is on browser. I do want to show this report to people, but I don't want them to see the pivot table or the data because raw data may have some columns which are confidential. How do I manage that? And that is the beauty of Excel. I come back to my Excel file and there is a very powerful option here which is commonly not noticed, which is called browser view options. This allows you to decide what you are showing to people and what you are hiding from them. So I choose the sheets which I want to show. In which case, now I have decided only power view will be shown to people, not the data. That is how you can control what happens. How do you send the report to people? You go to file, you don't have to go to OneDrive. I just showed you OneDrive because many, many of you may not have seen how it looks. But you can stay in Excel, say share, invite, people put their name and then you can even decide whether they can view it or edit it and in this case I'll say view and then just say share that's it so the traditional method of disseminating reports is also gone now while we are here using the same data I want to show you another and the last demo which actually shows you how maps can be drawn more effectively now in this case also we could have drawn a map but there is a much better way so let's open the same file and see what happens. <clears throat> so this is the India banking file. 
we just saved it i'm just reopening it now in this case this is the power view sheet which is fine we had only that pie chart right now so i'm going to add something to that pie chart i will remove this month right now make it a single pie chart and along with that i want to put city and along with city i want to put amount now remember whenever we are doing planning whether it's for logistics for sales for marketing for procurement for recruitment most of it happens in a geographical manner but when you look at the data the data analysis or monitoring happens either in alphabetical order or it happens in descending or ascending order of the amount so in this case i am doing it in descending order of amount now there is a dichotomy or there is a disconnect there because planning happens geographically and monitoring happens in numeric order so how can we solve that problem now that problem obviously was solved many years back by creating a proper software called geographical information system so a lot of sophisticated gis software is available but that everyone doesn't get because typically these are costly applications so few people may get it but now in excel in power view there is a button called map just click on it of course it needs internet connection it takes your data encrypts it send it to bing temporarily plots it for you and then deletes it from server so nothing is kept by microsoft but you get the same data visualized like this and remember everything we see in power view it implicitly is a filter so i'm just going to put one more thing here i'm going to put transaction type and amount just to make it little more complex and we'll make it into a bar chart so we have three things being shown here very nice now if i want to see what happened in restaurants and how are people across india using my credit card for restaurant use i click here and it actually shows me the picture on the other hand if i see what's happening in the metros and i say bombay uh, i'm just randomly selecting cities right now and it is actually showing me that as well as a filtered part of things so in the currently selected cities nobody is using my card for travel and hospital so remember in power view even the missing information is visually shown and that's very important very often we forget that analysis doesn't just mean understanding what is done or what is there what is not there is equally important and notice that there are some things dim that means this data doesn't apply there and that is how this can help you interpret the same data in a more meaningful way and get more information but while we are doing this let me show you another way of drawing this map that's called power map you have to install this also like we did for power query it's a free add in from microsoft install it there and then you install the map here once you install the power map you will get a button right next to this now power map is a dedicated 3d mapping software so it picks up your city because the name city was familiar otherwise you would have to identify it but this guy is much smarter in terms of plotting things i'm just going to enable the map labels and zoom in now this thing is a 3d map and it allows you to rotate the globe zoom in zoom out change the elevation scale in fact it also allows you to either see it as a globe or see it as a flat map but even if it is flat notice it's not just flat once it is flattened i can use these buttons and make it lie down or rotate in the view which i like so we will right now not use flat map we will use normal map like this now what has it done it has taken the city column and plotted it and what else can it understand just have a look at the list you will know so this is step number 1 plot the geography if you don't have an address latitude longitude coordinates also will do in the next step we decide what do you want to plot so obviously we want to plot the amount which gives you 3d bar charts like this we will rotate it so that it and we can understand the relative heights so you can zoom in also now i want to see it by card type so i choose card type and then it will draw color coded things in this case two types of cards were used so it can be either a stacked bar chart or it can be a side by side or it can be a pie chart or it can even be a heat map if it's dense thing heat map gives you a much better picture and all this can be now put into scenes like i'm sure many of you have a problem in or question in mind how is this going to happen with powerpoint so you, the answer is don't use powerpoint now because this is so live and interactive powerpoint makes it static so if you have a power view or power map or power pivot show that live during the 
presentation or review meeting because that's what is going to make life easier and people's problems or queries can be solved live. So in order to do that, you can say, I am first going to talk about South in the first step. And in the second step, I'm going to go to West. And in the third step, I'm going to go to North. And like this, you can sort of create slides, animate them. And then if you want to share it with someone who doesn't have PowerPoint, you can even create a video. Now, as though all this was not enough, there is a free preview going on right now called Power BI. So if you go for something called Power BI, this is Microsoft Power BI preview. I am intentionally showing it in Chrome to indicate what is happening. This is similar data about India tax collection. I am showing you how this looks on screen. So if I click here, this is data being picked up from an Excel file shown on browser and all the interactivity which we just saw is now available on browser through Power BI. And this Power BI thing is a free preview right now and a free version of that is continuing going to be available on the long run as well. Now just to show you what this guy does, this guy gets data from various sources similar to Power Query but this is more of a standalone system. So I guess we are running out of time. I know there is a lot to cover but still I am sure you have got a better picture of what is happening. So let me try to put this together. Now one last thing, let me see if I can show you. I'm going to go to our, I'm going to go back to our data and let me see if I can show you something. So this was our banking demo, which I showed you, right? Now, there can be a method by which you can actually ask questions in English and this will show you the report. So if I go to the dashboard, notice there is something which says ask a question about this data in the dashboard. So I'm going to ask silver card by city. So notice what it is showing me. I'm just typing this. So I'm saying silver card total amount. It is actually going through the data and showing me total amount. Now I want to break it down by city. So it is doing that and I want to show it as a chart. So now chart, no, I don't want chart. I want it as a map. So if it understands the syntax, let me try it again. Total amount. There you go. So I'm actually typing it in English and it is taking the queue. It is trying to find out the syntax and mapping it to your field names and doing this for you. So this is called natural language analytics. So to cut a very, very long and very powerful and exciting story short, this is what we covered. The whole concept is now don't just get data in Excel and struggle with it. Think differently. Whatever is the source, you can get it in Power Query, clean it up nicely, and then put it in Data Model. Data Model allows you to create relationships, eliminating VLOOKUP, allowing you to have large amount of data size in small file size and still get phenomenal performance on probably the same machine. One thing to remember, if you do handle large amount of data, there is no harm in getting a good powerful machine. I'm not saying a server class machine, a consumer class machine, but at least with more RAM. And if you handle large amount of data, use 64 bit version of Excel because that can handle large amount of memory. Once the data is in data model, it's up to you whether you want to use power view or power pivot or power map. Obviously, all of them have to be used ideally in a given situation because all of them are not giving you the same information. They're giving you additional and the whole purpose is to learn maximum. And finally, you can publish them either on OneDrive or the Power BI preview, which I showed you earlier. So this is a quick summary of what I have shown you. And of course, in the meantime, you can put questions and we will, I will answer those questions as many as I can. Of course, this is also getting recorded. And one thing for developers, if there are any developers, many times there are system reports which users take as input for further reports and the output of those system reports coming from lob systems is so bad that people spend hours of their precious life every day cleaning it up so this is what you should do as a developer 
your data is in normalized format. When you want to generate a report, you run a query, you get a denormalized record set that you put it in report writer and then generate the report and then say print that report. That part is correct. But do not put that printout into Excel when people choose export to Excel. If they do choose export to Excel, give them that denormalized record set. That's it. Even if that is done for every system report, people will spend millions of ways. Uh, people will save millions of man days globally every day. So as a developer, if you have control over this, please try it. So that's all. What am I saying next? Obviously, you have to understand all these components, try it out, do a parallel run, learn all of them and then utilize them to your advantage. Now, what I'm really trying to tell you is this session is not about producing your existing MIS or reports faster. That will happen anyway and you'll have so much extra time. What are you going to do with that? You're going to continue to analyze that further and further and then utilize that to your advantage. So along with your standard report, you're giving additional inputs, which at that point of time, nobody in the organization, including your boss knows. And that is how you're going to grow. So analytics is not just a fashionable thing to do, irrespective of the version of Excel you have, if you apply your mind and talent properly and use the features rightly, it will actually help you grow faster in whatever field you are in. If you don't have the latest version, you can still try it out as Office 365 trial. Take the E3 trial because it gives you all the components. Of course, the Power BI preview is independent. You can just sign up for that and use it independently of Office 365. And even if you have the latest version not installed on your machine, doesn't mean your organization doesn't have the license. Just ask IT. Sometimes IT does not install new version because nobody is asking for it. So try it. And if you have latest version, check whether you have Power Query or Power Map. If not, ask IT to install it. Generally, for the new things which I have shown, professional version of Excel is required. These are some references. These are the stalwarts in the fields of Power Query and Power Pivot. And there are some additional references as well. Uh, one more thing I forgot. Uh, although it is not related, but Windows 10 is coming and uh, there are many nice new features in Windows 10. The preview is free, so you can actually try it out. And I think Microsoft is going to give many people a free upgrade if you have a version of current or the version minus one of Windows. The start menu, which people desperately wanted, is back and back with a vengeance with lot many features. The browser also is now being recreated, which is much faster and more responsive. And Cortana, which was only available, which is the digital assistant. It started off as a character in the game called Hello, but now on Windows Mobile, it's available as a digital assistant. Will also be available as a part of regular Windows 10. So do try the preview.